Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be doing my first mixing tutorial. We're going to be doing a little, uh, going to show you how I mixed one of my songs. Um, this is an original song called Dark Days um, from my first album. Um, it's probably my most like pop, hip-hop um, song that I've produced and mixed. Um, so I will say, um, as far as the vocals I mixed in this, um, I guess I'd say... I was slightly inspired by how the weekend, um, how his vocals are mixed and processed, um, particularly um, during his on his album After Hours. Um, so um, on his vocals in After Hours, you can hear that his voice is slightly auto-tuned, um, and I think that was a really good choice for the production for that album. Um, now, I'm not saying he sounded like T-Pain, but you could hear the brightness um, on the autotune in his vocals, um, which I think really worked well. Um, and compared to his album before that, um, I think it's called Beauty Behind the Madness or something like that. Um, before that, the autotune was much less prominent to me, but I think it was actually a good artistic choice by the producer or mix engineer um to put a little more autotune um on his voice for uh, after hours i think it sounds really good obviously he's a phenomenal singer um but sometimes it can sound good to have a little autotune come through um so that's what i kind of did here pretty subtle um this song um i started producing it um with a descending violin line that was kind of like do 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 legato do 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 and it was just like a sad like ballad tempo like everything i start and then i was like well what if i just like all of a sudden cut cut this melody in half and then just have the tempo shoot way up and drop into a hip hop <laughs> Uh, track basically so that's what I did so I'll let you take a listen to it and then uh, we'll kind of dive into what I did All right, so that's the verse, uh, intro and verse. So yeah, um, with the lead vocal I have, um, as I said, I had I wanted to have some auto tune, but not be like super distracting or obvious. So um, what I use for auto tune, pretty much only, is uh, Vocal Synth Two. Um, I have tried Metatune, which also sounds really good, but it was two hundred dollars, and you have to have like a little iLock dongle in your computer or USB hub at all times, which I found kind of pointless and annoying. But um, anyway, uh, so I decided to um, not not buy it, basically. I just did the trial. So anyway, Vocal Synth 2, I think the autotune sounds really good, um, especially since you get all these other parameters with the plugin itself. Um, so I use Vocal Synth 2 a lot, um, especially with background vocals. Um, it's really useful. Um, whenever I have it on a lead vocal, a lot of times, um, if it's this kind of, uh, song, like highly produced, um, processed, uh, pop, dance kind of song, um, well, I'm not saying this is dance, but pop, this kind of genre, um, I'll put on polyvox, which kind of thickens the vocal and just gives it a slightly more processed sound, um, and then I have the autotune here. So the autotune right now is set at 50-50, um, which is is not too high. Um, so if you were to track vocals and record with the autotune set at this, you would definitely hear it, but not 
substantially compared to like a hundred. Um, usually when I track vocals, um, I'll probably set it to 30 or 35. Um, but, um, once in a while, like depend, it totally depends on the song. If I'm doing a more like folk song or indie, indie rock song, sometimes I, I'll track vocals with no auto tune at all. And, um, even sometimes I won't even correct the pitches in, in some songs like that where I want it to sound um, raw and uh, less processed. Um, so what I usually do, have I have the vocal synth. Uh, it's about halfway through my vocal chain. Um, and then I always have Melodyne first. Um, it's grayed out right now because there was some, like, update issue this is an old old logic project so when i opened it it was like oh issue blah 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 so usually i have melodyne first and then i correct the pitches and then i have the autotune after that and that usually um works really well if you have that um order of the chain um so i have i usually have melodyne followed by a compressor followed by eq and then um whatever else i want um in particular, this vocal chain is more plugins than I usually use. Um, but since it's highly processed, I think I was kind of experimenting with different things, um, adding more uh, compressors and EQ. Um, so, uh, actually, yeah, before we move on, I'll, I'm going to reopen that vocal synth real quick. Just so you can hear uh, what it sounds like with and without it. Growing up was all alone, my parents absent. A driver On obviously without growing up was all alone, my parents absent. On I drive around the city with my cup of absent. Okay, so it's it's pretty subtle to be honest. Um, but I can hear just a slight brightness in the in the vocal and in in the tone. Um, and the auto tune is just very slight. Um, and certain words you can hear it come out a little more, but um. Yeah, that's that's what I did for that. Um, so I have a compressor. I always track vocals with a compressor because it makes you hear yourself better, and then you can you know decrease the volume. If you if you're tracking vocals at zero decibels, which is the default, a lot of times you'll be clipping in Logic, not clipping into your microphone, but clipping in Logic, which is annoying because sometimes you'll get distortion. So I use a compressor so that I can turn down the volume, but I can raise the compression to hear myself better. Um, obviously that's not the only use, but that's one way it's useful. Um, so basically what a compressor does, if you don't know, is it, it squeezes the dynamic range of the recording. So if you have a lot of quiet notes followed by really loud notes, um, it will, it will compress the file so that the quietest, um, parts of the, of the recording are closer in dynamic range um, when compared to the uh, the loudest notes. So basically, it squishes it to make it more even, um, a more even sound. Um, so what I usually like to do with a compressor, um, this is just the stock Logic one. Um, lately, I, I mixed this like a year and a half ago, so probably some things I'll do differently now. So I, I still use these sometimes, but I've been using the Apogee modular compressor a lot because it sounds really good. And I got it with my Symphony desktop uh, interface as a package. Anyway, so I will, for a vocal, I usually have auto gain off. Um, attack and release depends on the vocal, if it's fast rap or legato. Um, legato is usually slower attack, slower release, faster staccato or faster singing, uh, slower attack, slower release usually. Um, I try to get around just as a ballpark in general, negative 5 dB of uh, gain reduction, and then I make it up. Myself, I usually have the ratio usually between 3 and 4 to 1, um, so that's just my general vocal compression setup around there, give or take. EQ comes next. What I do here is I cut out all the lows because um, your voice doesn't really go that low. Um, so I just cut it out just in case there's any sort of frequency in the room or anything that could come through. 
um, I sometimes give it a slight bump at around two to three hundred hertz um, to give the the vocal a little more presence, a little more low end, um, or kind of a chesty sound, just to give it a little more thickness. Um, 1K, I bumped it. I don't honestly don't remember why I put 1K up a little bit there. Probably just for a little brightness in that high mid. Um, around 2K is where I pretty much always, depending on how I'm singing, I pretty much always uh, cut that a little bit because it 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 um it's the range where your nasal the nasal nasality of the vocal kind of lives at around 2K. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, so if I raise this high, you'll hear it like almost sound like a nasally telephone. Here we go. Growing up was all alone, my parents absent. I drive around the city with my cup of absinthe. Steady taking I'll cut it. Drown away my Much cleaner, right? I don't even care if I live to see them again. I'm getting loaded, yeah, I'm blasting into space tonight. Cut it. My boys just started, I'm already on my second. Sits in the mix way better, too. And just by cutting that a little bit makes it sound, you know, a lot better. And then I, I usually um, boost the high end, give it a little high shelf there, around 5K up to give the vocal a little shimmer and brightness up top. So that's my EQ. Next, uh, which I don't use anymore, is Greg Wells Voice Centric. Um, I mean, this makes your voice sound pretty good if you just slap it on and want to track with it. There's no problem with that. Um... I typically don't use it anymore because I just kind of make my own chain with my own compressor, EQ, and reverb. Um, this has, a, I'm pretty sure this has built-in compression and EQ just in the plugin if you if you load it in. And then it has delay, doubler, reverb. Still a good plugin, still good to use, but um, I just tend to like to make my own sound with multiple plugins than um, just have this. But this is a good, quick, quick, easy way to um, track sounding pretty nice um and then i just have another compressor fab filter compressor kind of was just experimenting with doing multiple eq and compression see what it sounded like and last i have nectar elements which um i don't use a ton to be honest but since uh this is like one of the most processed songs i have or processed vocals rather um I put this on because it gives your vocal a more processed sound. So basically, once you play the audio, this will process it through the plugin and then automatically kind of set it to what it thinks the vocal needs. And then you can change it um, afterwards, which it has clarity, which um, I think is some sort of EQ, de-esser, dynamics, uh, which is probably compression, tone and space, uh, tone... I don't know. To be honest, it might be another EQ, space, reverb, obviously, and then pitch. Um, but I'll, I'll play a little bit of the vocal with it, and then without it, you can hear. I think it just adds a little brightness and more of a process sound. Growing up was all alone, my parents absent. I drive around the city with my cup of absinthe. Steady taking drinks to drown away my sorrows. I don't even care if I live to see Without it here now. Getting loaded, yeah, I'm blasting into space tonight. My boys just started, I'm already on my second flight. Waiting by the phone to hit another party. Drinking with my friends. I don't know if you could hear it, but it, it, I think it just gives it a little more brightness. Um, and I, I forgot that if you turn it on and off while the vocal's going, it makes the vocal out of time. Because <laughs> um, it's processing, so it takes time for it to do that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I think that's good um, to use for a more, just a subtle process sound to your vocal. Um, the only other thing I did that some people asked me about were these uh, ad-libs that I added here. Alright, so all I did there, um, I do this quite often with backup vocals. Um, I can't remember exactly what I did as far as recording. I might have just, um, re-recorded that part and doubled it and said, uh, live to see tomorrow. Um, I probably did that because from the audio file, that's what it looks like I did. 
Uh, but sometimes I'll just take the verse, copy it, and cut out the exact words I need, and then put the processing plugins on it. It depends on if I want to change how it sounds with my voice before doing the processing. <coughs> okay, so I have a low voice panned uh, left just slightly to negative 20, and then the high voice is panned 20 to the right. Um, so uh, panning is a really good way to create a fuller mix. Um, when you have more things panned left and right, it creates more space, wide space in your overall mix than if everything is centered. Um, and it also it, cr it creates space for things to live in their own world in the soundscape, as opposed to kind of blending all together and can if everything is centered it can kind of be a wash of everything kind of trying to fight you know what I mean um, so panning is really important um, so um, a lot of times what I use now is called little altar boy by uh, sound toys but I don't think I had it back then so I just used vocal synth for this all I did was um, put BioVox talk box on, which just gives a little more of a robotic sound. And then the PolyVox does most of the work. And so I changed the formant down negative six, character down all the way. So the formant and the character both change the tone and, um, how the, how the vocal sounds. So if the formant and character are really low, then it makes it sound like this. And if it's really high, it sounds like this. You know, so all I did was for the left one, I put the character down all the way, like down really low. Here, if we see it. The sea tomorrow. And that's all it is. It's like, it's pretty, it's not, you know, it's pretty subtle kind of by itself. And then the, the high one is just pan to the right. The sea tomorrow. And, um, so I can open that real quick just to show you. So yeah, the same exact setup except I didn't put BioVox. I just I just put the foreman up, foreman and character up all the way to give it the chipmunk sort of effect. And it's only I mean that you know took a couple minutes, and I think it's a really really effective way to um, add excitement to certain phrases and interest in the mix. Um, yeah, so I think it's I think it works really well in the mix here. I don't even care if I live to see tomorrow. I'm getting loaded, yeah, I'm blasting into space tonight. My boys just started, I'm already. All right, let's go into the chorus here. Waiting by the phone to hit another party. Drinking with my friends, but my friends don't even know me. All my people, raise your hands if you got no one else. Except that bottle sitting high on your kitchen shelf. Because she's all. Right, so my camera decided to stop working for some reason, um, but we are 18 minutes in, and I don't want to do this again, so <laughs> uh, this is the second time I've already done this. Technical issues, okay. Um, so yeah, we're already getting kind of lengthy here, so I'm going to kind of, uh, you know, go through this really quick. All my people, raise your hands if you got no one else. So honestly, this is like, um, pretty much set up just like the verse. Um, I have like all the same plugins. Only difference is I doubled the chorus. Uh, I just re-recorded it with my voice, and then let's see what I did. I put chorus. I put the chorus on vocal synth, which actually actually makes makes it sound a lot fuller. Um, but I didn't put it up all the way. I think all the way up it sounds uh, kind of thin and not as nice of as it's a little lower um so just adding a double um to the back of your chorus and then having it panned with a chorus effect or panning two files left and right adds a lot of thickness even if the volume is like pretty low um so let's listen to a little again 
Because she's all I've got I'll take another shot Stuck in my same old ways It's just those dark, dark days All my people, raise your hands If you got no one else Except that bottle sitting high On your kitchen shelf Because she's all I've got I'll take another shot Stuck in my same old ways It's just those dark, dark days Growing up was all alone Alright, so yeah, um so what I did is I had the mean vocal, then I had um, I recorded over it, and then I put the formant down, just like we did before. Formant and character down, and then I put chorus on so it would be uh, panned a little bit for the low voice, um, panned a little bit to both. And then I did another couple takes with a more auto-tuned sound, um, panned left and right, so the auto-tune here is 100 on both. Um, so I wanted it just to have a couple background vocals in there that sounded more processed to add um, a different a different sound, a different voice kind of in the background. Um, so that can be effective to tab different layers with different autotune settings because um, it sounds like there's more people involved kind of. Um, so that's pretty much the second verse is processed the same way. Um, chorus, I think the second chorus is pretty much the same thing. Day I swear I fly away. Yeah, so right here, end of second verse. After all, she's all I've got. One more drink, i mom away. One day, I swear I'll fly away. All my so you can hear on those last um, words, fly away. Um, and it sounds really nice on the end of a, a vocal phrase if you automate either reverb and delay or both. And then it, it, the echo the echo of that last line will flow into what comes next or the chorus here in this case. After all, she's all I've got. One more drink, I'm on my way. One day, I swear I'll fly away. All my people re Yeah, so right there. Right there, I just automated the delay to come in right at the end there, um, which is really simple if you don't know how to do it. Um, if you just press A on your keyboard, it brings up automation. Automation. And then um, all you have to do, what I do usually, is I press latch on this menu. Um which you can't really see. <laughs> um, so if you open automation and then go on your channel strip of whatever you're doing, you'll see um, above the pan knob, you'll see um, the automation window, which says read, touch, latch, or write, and I go la I press latch, and then if you just press play anywhere, and then you move a certain knob, like the, 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 the bus that goes to the delay, then it will... Um, add that delay as you're playing the song and then that will be written into the track and it will do it every time you just have to make sure you you do it right or then you have to undo it and redo it again so that's how you do that um i guess the only thing i'll go over here is i did the bridge of this song i wanted it to just kind of like sound like a totally different voice and part so i put auto tune up all the way um as a stylistic choice here Give me a shot, I need another shot Give me a shot, I need another shot Because she's all I've got I'll take just one more shot And some more in the just back Just one more Give me a shot, I need another shot Give me a shot, I need just one more shot Because she's all I've got I'll take just one more shot just one more. All my people raise your hands if you found someone else. Now you so right there, um, we're almost done here. I don't want to keep you guys forever on this video, but um, there's like so much, I, so much in depth I can go here. Um, so I just added some on like the final choruses. It's always nice to add, add just more layers some way in the production. I added some trumpets in the final chorus here. I added. Um, a couple more um, vocal ad libs, um, which you'll hear um, like right here. All my people, raise your hands if you found someone else. Now you don't need that bottle sitting on your kitchen shelf because she's all I've got. I gave up taking shots. So, yeah, it's really nice if you have, um, on like the final chorus, especially, um, have some other voices come in and reinforce 
certain words or lines um, and then pan them left and right. And that will definitely uh, make the final chorus uh, more impactful and more interesting. God, I gave up taking shots. I got some brand new ways. There's no more dark, dark days. All my people, raise your hands if you found someone else. Now you don't need that bottle sitting on your kitchen shelf because she's all I've got. I gave up taking shots. I got some brand Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's, that's a gist of the song. At the end there, I just, I think I probably just automated some reverb and delay to have that vocal fade out, um, which always sounds nice at the end of a song. Um, so that's about it for, for this video. Um, if you have any questions in particular, just uh, drop me a comment. Um, I'd love if you'd subscribe. This is uh, my new channel for uh, music production and mixing. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, any questions, drop them below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.